So you want to know how to ride a scooter? Well, first you've got to learn how to ride one of these. Learning to ride a bike well will teach you balance on two wheels. It will also get you used to the way the brakes work, because the layout is the same on a mountain bike as it is on a scooter. So, now you've learned how to ride a bike. Now, you've got to learn how to ride a scooter. Oh look, there's one. Let's go over the controls. In your left hand is your rear brake. The switch here is your high and low beams. And then you've got your indicators. Move it side to side to indicate and press it in to cancel. Indicators on a scooter don't self cancel like they do in a car. Then down here you have your horn. In your right hand you'll have your front brake and the throttle is on the grip. Twist down to increase speed. Finally, you have the button for starting the engine. In order for this to work, you'll need to pull on one of the brake levers. If your scooter doesn't have a starter button, then you'll pull the kickstarter down here. Now let's get familiar with the centre stand. To get it off the stand, simply push forward, and the stand will retract. To get it on the stand, jump off and stand on the foot peg, pulling the scooter backwards. So the first thing we want to discuss is gear. Now when you're riding on the road at very high speeds, you need to make sure that you're well protected. So I'm wearing some reinforced plastic gloves with plenty of good protection and they're also waterproof um, which means that your hands don't freeze to death. I'm also wearing waterproof trousers and a waterproof jacket and of course a helmet. So you don't need too much more than that for a little scooter but for a bigger one you're going to want to look at getting a jacket and some trousers and maybe even some boots as well. So now, what you're going to want to do is just take little baby steps and get used to where the clutch engages. So you're going to very slowly come on the throttle and we're moving and then you're just going to let go again. And you want to do this a few times to get used to how long it takes for the clutch to engage and how fast you're going to go when it does engage. So now the next thing that you're going to want to do is add a bit more speed into the equation. And this time we're going to be working on our brakes. And you're going to slowly engage the throttle, get it moving, lift your feet up, and then once you've got it going, you're going to release that throttle and pull on the brakes and bring it to a stop and make sure that you put your feet down. Now it's very important that you release that throttle. I've had friends ride this thing and when they ride it, they don't realize you have to release the throttle and so what they'll do is this. They'll go, oh yeah, all's good. Oh, I want to stop. And see how you're fighting the engine. And if you apply more throttle, then the brakes are really going to struggle to work. So you want to do that a few more times, bring it up to a bit of speed, release that throttle and pull on the brakes and come to a stop. So now what you're going to do is find yourself a nice straight piece of road and make it go a little bit faster. So we're going to take it up to 30 kilometers an hour, then we're going to come off that throttle and on the brakes and bring it to a nice stop. Now we've got to work on cornering. By the end of this you should be able to turn around in the width of the road. And so basically what you're going to do, you're going to get it going and then if you're not moving that fast, you're just going to turn it around like that. Make sure you lean it in, lean the scooter over and then you just turn it. We'll do it again here and you just lean it in nice and slow and you just go around the corner. So you want to really practice that a few times and you want to practice turning in both directions so that means doing figure eights so you can just start off slow go around the corner nice and smoothly and then bring it around here go around the corner nice and smoothly and get those figure eights going really really good if you're having to kind of go like this to make it go around the corner then there's a problem you want to make it as smooth as you possibly can pretend you've got a passenger on the back and you're trying to make the ride for them really nice and comfortable. Let's talk about riding on the road. Where on the road should you be? Now a lot of people get this wrong. They will ride close to the hard shoulder and so they'll be riding along like this. Right, and then they'll see a car, so they'll come out and they'll be like, okay, yep, now we passed the car, so now we dip back in here and we ride along like this. That is a very bad place to be riding on the road because you're not holding your position and it means that, say I'm following a car here, and this car suddenly has to stop, if I'm on this side of them, where do I go? Right? I'm stuck. Whereas if I'm on the other side, then I can stop right here. Let's follow this guy. So you're coming along, this guy is riding along here. So you want to be riding 
around about on that right hand wheel there. Around about there. There's a very wide road so it's not too important. And of course there's no centre line so it's a bit hard to tell. But yeah, when you're following cars, you want to be riding around about on that right hand wheel so that you can hold your place on the road and if they suddenly have to stop then you've got space to move um, in between the cars coming the other way. The next thing that you want to get good at is a hill start. So what you're going to do is you're going to come along and you're going to stop and then you're going to hold in the rear brake and you're going to come on throttle so that clutch engages and then you're just going to release that brake and then come on the throttle like that. If there's a danger ahead and you need to move fast then you do a thing called counter steering and that is basically where you push on the wrong side of the handlebars but it actually makes it go the right way. So essentially you don't want to push too hard but you need enough force to be able to make it turn in that direction. So if I push on this side the handlebars are going to turn that way and you'd expect it to turn this way right but let's see what happens if I just push on this. You see what happened? So the scooter actually turned to the left instead of the right and so it's basically a really quick way to get your thing out of the way as fast as possible. If you try and do that just by leaning, it'll be too, be too much time. If you do that, you can just get it into the turn straight away and move out of the way of danger. I hope this video has helped you out and enjoy your time out on two wheels. See ya.